Good evening and welcome to day 15 of the 100 Days of Shakespeare. Tonight we are having a bit of a look at five things you probably didn't know about William Shakespeare. Some of these pretty obscure, so I'll be surprised if you've heard some of these before. My name's Paul Adams from Small Crown Productions and I am very pleased to be taking part in the 100 Days of Shakespeare event, uh, an event facilitated by Carolina Furman of the Society for Creative Anachronism. If you want more information about the event, check out the link in the description below. This video is one of what I'm hoping to be 100 videos as my contribution to the 100 Days of Shakespeare. Uh, I've got a bunch of interviews lined up and a whole range of information coming at you over the next uh, couple of months, really, to, uh, to dig into the lifetimes, work and era that William Shakespeare was prevalent. So um, the purpose of this event is to be able to dig into Shakespeare and his lifetimes and work. Um, at your own pace. So it's pretty chilled, it's pretty relaxed, and these videos that I'm producing are um, designed really to be a jumping off point for you to be able to go and do some more research. So with that, let's jump into tonight's five things you probably didn't know about William Shakespeare. So, number one. Shakespeare was married at 18 to Anne Hathaway, who was 26 at the time, but at that time, she was also three months pregnant. That's right. So uh, instead of the normal three announcements in church about their engagement, there was only one. And then they were married and six months later gave birth to their first daughter. So this was obviously uh, seen as a bit of a rush wedding to... Uh, you know, make good on the pregnancy. And so uh, William Shakespeare was married at 18 and his wife at the time was three months pregnant. So there you go. Number two. Uh, what have I got? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, William Shakespeare is believed to have got his start in theatre by holding the horses of the nobles that turned up to watch the plays. So uh, there is an account by a descendant of Joan Shakespeare, Joan Shakespeare being Shakespeare's sister. So one of the direct descendants of him um, made a reference to a story that was handed down through the family that uh, Shakespeare got his start because he accidentally held the reins of a horse of uh, a nobleman coming to a play. And uh, basically that's how he got his start. And there's also an account by Samuel Johnson in, and I'm going to read this so I get it right, uh, the Plays of William Shakespeare, published in 1765, where Samuel Johnson adds, um, they came on horseback to the play, and when Shakespeare arrived in London, his first expedient was to wait at the door of the playhouse and hold the horses of those who had no servants that they might be ready again after the performance. In this office, he became so conspicuous for his care and readiness that in a short time, every man was alighted and called for Will Shakespeare. Oh, sorry, for every man as he alighted. So as he got off the horse, called for Will Shakespeare. So, um, yeah, there you go. So Shakespeare's first job at the theatre, believed to be horse holder, horse wrangler. Number three. Ah, yes. Number three is there is only one official civic record that names William Shakespeare. So let's jump into this one. In 1594, there is a record of a check that was written to William Kemp, William Shakespeare, and Richard Burbage. Richard Burbage being the famous clown actor or actor, character actor rather, of, uh, of Shakespeare's company. So a check written to William Kemp, William Shakespeare, and Richard Burbage for the amount of £20 uh, for two comedies showed before Her Majesty in Christmas time last. Now that is the only official civic record that mentions William Shakespeare. So there are obviously lots of other records of other playwrights talking about him, other records around the place of him, but that is supposedly the only civic record that mentions Shakespeare. Number four. The years between uh, 1578 
and seven, uh, sorry, 1585 and 1592. So these are commonly uh, referred to as Shakespeare's unknown years. Nobody knows what he was actually doing at this time. So there is some understanding that he moved to London at this time and was working his way through the theatres and basically around 1592 was, was a successful playwright. All of a sudden he's, he's just known as the successful playwright. But nobody actually really knows what he was doing for those seven years. There is actually another period a bit earlier from 78 to 82, that four-year gap there, where he left grammar school, got wet, married, but there's not a lot of account of what he did during those years either. But 1585 to 1592, there is really no record at all of what he was doing. Now, there is some speculation that he travelled to Italy and Rome. Uh, There was an account by a scholar in around 2000, 2001, who believed that she found three signatures by William Shakespeare in Rome around that time during those seven years that would put him squarely in Italy in that period. Now, there is some support for this as a concept because so many of Shakespeare's plays were set in Italy. His knowledge of Italy is so good in those plays that it makes a lot of sense that he would have traveled there. And this is possibly the key time when he did that. So um, it, it's it's very, very possible that he did that and then came back after getting all this life experience and started writing plays in London and, and hit his peak in 1592 when he really starts to get noticed. So number four, the forgotten years, the unknown years. Who knows what happened in those seven years. But there you go. And the fifth one, which is uh, quite interesting to me, is we know Richard Burbage was, you know, famous actor in Shakespeare's company. John Burbage, his father, built the first of the amphitheater theaters called The Theater and uh, was, you know, the, the brains and the money behind the building of that theater. So Richard Burbage has a lineage of connection to the theatre. Um, but that John Burbage was believed to have been born in Stratford-upon-Avon, which is where Shakespeare was from. And there is a record that John Shakespeare, William Shakespeare's father, leased a building to William Burbage in Stratford-upon-Avon. Now, We don't have a record specifically that I can find of the connection between William and John Burbage, but given that they are both in that same area, area in that same period, it is is highly likely that those two people were related. So we have a connection to the Burbage family and the Shakespeare family long before Shakespeare was writing plays in England. And that could be some of the way that he managed to get employment and find his way in there. So if John Burbage is starting to create the theatre, that gives Shakespeare an opportunity through those family connections to start getting work there and then starts to build his reputation through that work. So fascinating bit of insight there. Um, Not one that I've seen on any of these five things you didn't know type of videos before. So there you go. So number one, he was married with a pregnant wife. Number two, uh, there's only one civic record. Got his start holding horses. We don't know what happened for those seven years between 1585 and 1592. And there is a very strong connection to the Burbage family from Shakespeare's youth. So there you go. Five things you probably didn't know about Shakespeare. Some jumping off points for you to go and do a bit more research if that's the sort of thing that you want to do. Um, Thanks very much for hanging around. It'd be great if you gave this video a like, subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you got something out of this, you probably know somebody else who would get something out of it. So share it with them in the comments, tag them, whatever you got to do to pay it forward so we can keep helping each other out. Now, it would also be great. Have a look at some of these other videos that will appear on the screen. Think that way. before you leave. Uh, See you tomorrow.